today on Maker Monday, we are talking about crumb quilts. I know that sounds kind of weird, like not even sounds appealing, but it is because you can take all of these things, all these, and I literally just rummaged through my scrap bin and uh, maybe even like the dog bed trash scrap thing to make this stuff. So I just pulled out a bunch of random pieces from samples and from stuff that I've been working on. Because um, so people ask me all the time when I'm doing my Monday videos, I will just take my scraps and kind of shove them over to the side of the table. I have a secret. So one bag I have, I put things that are too tiny to do anything with, those go into a dog bed. And then I have another hamper, which is actually empty right now, that I throw pieces that are big in. So things that are biggish pieces like this. I throw that into a hamper. If they're smaller than this, so if they're pieces that are like this, I throw them into this bin, which has now been completely overwhelmed by big pieces. So I have one bin that says crumbs on it, and one bin that says scraps on it, and one bin that's dog bits. No, I don't throw all that stuff away. So don't freak out if you think that at the end of my videos, I just kind of chuck everything. I don't. But then what am I going to do with it? So again, tiny pieces, pieces that I don't want to fuss with, I throw into a dog bed. Things that are small pieces. So, I mean, these are just two inch squares that when I was making a video, I cut too many of. I can't really throw these in the big scrap bin because they're probably not going to make anything else. So I throw them in the small scrap bin. Or this was from making a sample and I cut this the wrong size, so I couldn't use it for making the sample. So I threw it in the crumb bin. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a quick trick on what to do with all these little pieces. Those of you who are control freaks, you can just skip this right now because this is going to make you itchy. If you want to work on something and you don't really want to think that hard, this is the thing to do. And you would be shocked at how cool stuff looks when it doesn't match, it's all mismatchy, it's all scrappy, it's all weird. If you're playing along in our Facebook page or in our Facebook group with the PhD challenge, at the beginning of the PhD challenge, I said, it's okay if you have stuff that you really don't have any intention of finishing anymore. Throw it in a bin, and I'm going to show you how to make crumb quilts with it. So, I know this sounds crazy, but you can take the pieces of the quilt of the project that you don't care about anymore and chop it up and do this with it instead. So, if you're not in love with the project anymore, give it a different light. All right, so let's say for this example... This piece is a little big to do anything with a crumb quilt for. So I'm just going to fold it and then I'm going to cut it up. This is something I couldn't use anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's okay. So I've got all these pieces of things that, so like this was from a strip set that I made. This was actually cutting the edges off of a quilt top I just finished. These are little pieces that I just sort of sewed together in a weird random pattern. Okay. There's no right or wrong. Just grab stuff and start putting it together. This was one of the 12 days of making projects that I made too many Dresdens for. You can use anything. I am using a product called Scrap Tape. It is water soluble. So what that means is you sew everything to this. You make your project, you quilt your quilt, you do the whole thing, you throw it in the wash, this goes away. So you don't have to worry that there's an extra bit of stabilizer or anything in there because this is just going to completely wash away. Don't worry about that. And it's really lightweight and airy. Um, it comes in three different sizes. I'm going to show you that at the end of the sale, but I'm using a piece of the five inch tape. The fun part about this is you can make your own charm squares. You can make your own layer cakes. You can make your own jelly roll strips, but it can all be scrappy. So this is a really good time for a wool pressing mat. Uh, the one that's on the sale today, I think, is a 14-inch square. I think this one's more like 14 by 20, but anyway. I am going to use my little steam fast iron because I don't want to get up and down to the iron and the cutting board and all that stuff for all of this. You can pin if you choose to. You don't really have to. So I'm going to take one of my weird shapes. So this is actually a Dresden point. This is, um, you can sew down to these sides if you want to, but I'm just going to line this up with the corner of my piece, okay? The only real rule to this is you don't want raw edges. So try to find things that are going to cover your edges here, okay? So like this one, we cut this strip here, 
And as long as it's going to cover the seam, then use it. So line it up. I'm going to take it to my machine. I have my quarter inch foot on just because I almost always have my quarter inch foot on. And I just put right sides together and it doesn't have to be a perfect seam. Just make sure that your seam isn't too narrow because remember this stuff that we're sewing on is going to wash away and you don't want it to be sewn to nothing when this washes out. So just going to sew all the way across. Okay, This is not, um, there's no measuring, there's no rules. We're just going to sew stuff until the whole piece of fabric is covered. I like having my little steam iron here. You can also use a little roller um, roller tool if you like that. I prefer heat. So tips with using this product. You do not want to use steam because this is a wash away product. So if you put steam on this, it's going to go away now and that defeats the purpose. So I am, I've turned off the steam button on my little steam fast iron. It's just hot. You do want to make sure that you're pressing things to one side though, because that's how you're gonna cover everything. So if I wanna cover this piece over here, that's probably gonna do it, but maybe not quite, but I don't know, let's see. I'm just gonna keep slapping fabric on here until I cover my whole piece. Now I'm gonna show you what to do with those smaller pieces. If you have a bunch of these tiny pieces like I have over here, then you can sew them together before you attach them to the stabilizer. All right, so that didn't quite cover that once I had a seam allowance, so we'll just add another piece of fabric over there. So before we started, I took some of my smaller pieces like this and I started to sew them together. Again, there's no wrong answer here. So you can just keep sewing fabric to fabric until you get enough to cover a seam. Now this isn't straight and this is selvage. So I'm just gonna take my scissors. I don't even use a rotary cutter when I do this. I just take scissors to everything and trim it down until it gets to a place that you can use it, okay? Our seam already ends right there. So I'm gonna do something weird here. I'm gonna line this up right sides together and we're gonna sew it right here just so I can show you another trick. So I know this didn't go all the way across the seam or to the other side of the foundation, that's okay. So once we get that one on there and press this open or press this to one side. Now, I have covered this all the way over over here. But now I have this weird shape here and this isn't covered. So what if we take this piece? <laughs> All right, let's take a big piece so I can show you this trick. So we're gonna take a big piece and we're gonna cover this across the seam so that we cover this raw edge and this raw edge and this raw edge over here. So I'm just gonna lay this on top of there it doesn't matter that I have more than a quarter of an inch, as long as I have at least a quarter of an inch. And I'm gonna sew this piece down. Now I don't, since I want this to be a crumb quilt and I want it to have as many fabrics as possible, I don't really wanna have this giant piece of fabric. So, what I'm gonna do is come about here and I'm just gonna rip this across the edge. Okay, get rid of that. Now what we've done is we've covered up these raw edges over here. You don't need it to look like a strip block. We're not really making strip blocks. We're making sort of just random things here. So now we've decided we're gonna go a completely different direction on this part. You can cut away the stuff that's hanging off the edge if you want to. I mean, you might as well, you can keep using it as crumbs, right? And you'd be amazed how you can keep sewing and sewing and sewing and it doesn't seem like your crumb pile gets any smaller. So that's not unusual either. So I'm just gonna grab, you can grab really skinny strips. This is already a strip set. 
So if I sew this on here, it's going to look like I did a whole bunch of things. This is not the normal, really precise sewing that I love to show you guys. This is, I don't want to think about it. I just want to sit here and make something. And I'm never going to make the same thing twice this way. All right. So now it's looking a little linear. So maybe we can break that up a little bit. Let's see. I sewed some stuff together a minute ago. Where did that go? I don't know. Oh, here it is. So this is an odd shape. So what I did was I took this piece and sewed it to that one. I sewed that one to there and I pressed it. So again, it doesn't have to be a straight line. If it makes you itchy that this is not a straight line, then make yourself a straight line. Just take your scissors to it and get rid of the other pieces. You probably still don't want those selvage words in there. I don't know, maybe you do. It doesn't bother me if you wanna leave those in there. So you can sew some of the pieces together before you put them onto your stabilizer. That's okay too. You do kind of want to avoid having just layers and layers and layers underneath here because you do still want to quilt through this. You still want it to be functional at the end. But since we made that straight over there, we can now I'm going to cut that selvage. I don't like keeping the selvages in there because obviously the selvages are thicker than the other stuff, so it's not ideal. But now I can cut that off. Then I can just, um, I don't know, cover this. And we've already almost covered this whole piece of stabilizer. This is one of those times though that it's really nice to have a mat and an iron right next to you so you don't have to get up and down and up and down. When we get the whole thing covered, then we will go and trim it all down. Now here, see how I have a raw edge here and over here? I'm going to go ahead and find something long enough to cover that whole piece there, which that will work. I'd want to make sure that these raw edges are all covered. So I'm just gonna angle it kind of weird there. And I'm gonna use the top piece of fabric as my guide for my seam. Right. Now, when we press this, let's see if we've got all of our stabilizer covered. Not quite. So I still need to cover this corner and this corner. So let's use, how about this piece? This piece will cover that corner. And usually when I do this, I don't start on one straight end or the other. I try to start kind of in the middle and work my way out because it stops me from doing things very straight and linear. Um, I tend to get into a pattern of everything needing to be symmetrical. And if I start in the middle with an odd shape, then it kind of stops me from even being able to do that. All right, so if I sew those last two pieces on and I press them, now we have covered that entire piece of five inch strip. All right, I know it looks kind of crazy right now because well it is. But when I flip this over, I can see that my entire piece of stabilizer is covered with stuff, okay? So we're gonna take this over to the cutting mat and we're gonna show you how to trim it down. All right, so here's our crazy crumb quilt block that we did. I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna trim this down to whatever size blocks I want. So if I wanted to make charm squares, say, maybe my pattern calls for five inch squares or five inch strips, then I can cut this down to five inch pieces. 
So let's say you're doing a like a Bonnie Hunter quilt. She likes five inch squares. So you can either turn this into say a five by 10. You could do that right here. Actually, I wanna keep that Dresden shape because I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, so now when you just clean it up, you got this really weird scrappy piece of, of fabric that you can now make something else with. Um, I've done this before and then chopped these up into say um, pinwheel blocks, sew them together as half square triangles. So you can cut this into, uh, let's say we're gonna make a five inch square. And then you want to make pinwheels out of it. So you take another five inch square and you draw the line and you do half square triangles with it. I know this looks crazy, but when you put these all together as something else, it makes a really cool thing. So here's another bigger piece that I did earlier today. Some of you will probably recognize some of these fabrics and some of these designs. Like this was from my beginning quilt block and this was from my new pattern when I did the mini one. And um, this is another one of those Dresden blocks. So it's just sort of recycling what you've already got in your stuff. And some pieces are really small. This is fabric y'all haven't even seen yet because I'm playing with something with that. So depending on what size stabilizer you start with, you can trim this down to whatever size you want to then work with. Like I said, the stabilizer comes in multiple sizes. So depending on what what space or size you want it to end up at, you just trim it down to what you want. So for instance, I think for this one, I'm gonna do um, five by 10 inch blocks. So basically what you're doing is you're making fabric. So if your pattern calls for a five by 10, that's what you have. Or you can make a whole bunch of five by 10 inch blocks and then sew them to each other and make a really scrappy kind of crazy border print or however you want to get there. Okay. That's how easy crumb quilting is. There's not a lot of analyzing. There's no measuring. There's not a lot of uh, crazy making things in it, but you're making crazy fabric. So if you need a project where you don't want to think, you just want to sit down and sew some stuff together this is the move. Because not only are you gonna use up your scraps and you can use little pieces to do this. Not only are you gonna use up your scraps, but you're gonna make your own fabric. Um, I like to do this technique when I finish a quilt or um, I know people who will take their scraps from the entire year and do this and make sort of a memory quilt of their fabric. So it's really fun to pick up fabric that you've made and go, oh, this quilt was the um, straight out of line ruler. And then this quilt was one of the 12 days of making. And then this was the Henry's humongous hexagon. And, and this was when I was trying to figure out how to make that new um, wedding quilt sampler. So it kind of becomes a memory quilt for your own stuff. And even if it doesn't make any sense to anybody else, it makes sense to you. And it's like a little memory thing. All right, so let's talk about the products that we used. And then you can go ahead. Okay. All right, is everybody ready to make some crumb quilts? So take those PhD challenges that you're not in love with anymore, chop them up into little pieces, make strip sets out of them, cut squares out of them. It doesn't really matter. And then sew them together with each other or with other stuff and make some new fabric. This is really simple. And then when you go to sew these, like I said, you sew these together, you make a whole quilt top, you throw it in the washing machine, all the stuff on the back washes out. You don't have to worry about it. So the stuff that we used in the video today, this is the scrap tape I used, this five inch tape. So depending on what sizes you wanna make, then you can decide which size scrap tape is the best for that. Personally, I think the 13 inch scrap tape is the best because if I'm trying to make five inch squares, I like to be able to trim it down around the outside. So anything smaller than a five inch square, the five inch tape is really good for. You wanna make your own jelly roll strips. This is two and a half inches wide. Just cover this with fabric however you like. It's already two and a half inches wide. You can add it in with your jelly roll strips. 
the 13 inch stripe or strip scrap tape is really good for making 10 inch squares or 12 inch squares. So a lot of patterns, especially big half square triangle patterns, will have a 12 inch square. This is the fabric, this is the size I would use for this. This has 10 yards in it, so you can make a whole bunch of 12 inch squares. Okay, so again, scrap tape comes 13 inches, five inches, two and a half inches. If you're gonna make a bunch of 12 inch squares, I really like this 12 and a half inch ruler because you can make squares, anything 12 and a half inches or smaller. This is also a quilter select ruler, so it's not gonna slip. So when you have all those seams that kind of make it a little bit wonky, this is gonna lay and stay right flat on top of your, of your scrap or your crumb fabric. This is not a 14 inch square um, wool mat, but that's what I have on today's sale. So the square is about that big which is just the right size to sit next to your sewing machine. And it is just the right size to use your steam fast iron on, which is this tiny little thing here. Remember no steam when you're doing this process, okay? If you don't want to iron and you'd rather seam roll, you can always use the Violet Craft Seam Roller. I really like this as well. I just happen to be a hot iron girl and I like things to be nice and flat and pressed. So that's why I like the iron. If you don't have a way to put an iron right next to your sewing table, then this is the way to go. If you're looking for inspiration about what to do with these bits, I absolutely love this book. It's called The Improv Handbook for Modern Quilters. See this quilt here? That is simply a crumb quilt. So this technique and the, and the techniques that are shown in this book for how to choose things, see that quilt there? That is also a crumb quilt. So this is just a really great way to take all of your bits and put them together and make a project. All right. So I hope you guys have some fun doing this. I would like to have um, a crumb quilt challenge on our Facebook page where if you make something with this technique, you can post it in the Facebook page. I'd really like that to be one of the things that we do with our leftover PhD challenges. So maybe by the time we start PhD challenges again next year, um, we can do that. If you don't know what PhD challenges are, hop over to our Facebook page. Pinned right at the top of our Facebook page is an explanation and some PDF format forms that you can print out and get started with our, our, uh, our fun little game that we play in our private Facebook page. All right, so I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.